My name is Ben Knowles from East Coast Yacht Sales and this video is a continuation of a series that we're doing to educate our customers or future customers on the Axopar line. This video is specific to the Axopar 28 and the electrical system on board. So please take a look at this video and if you have any questions for us, feel free to reach out to us using the information below this video. So there's a fair amount of things that I want to go through uh, regarding the electrical system on an AXO PAR 28 cabin. Um, but the first thing what we're going to do is just walk through uh, where everything is. Um, and so we'll start off by where the battery switches are. Now there is some nuance um, with the 28 cabins um, and in that uh, with twin engine boats versus single engine boats. Uh, this particular boat that we're on is a twin engine boat. So this boat has two start batteries. These are the battery switches here. And then this is the service battery as well, uh, which is on, which is powering all the lights. Now what a service battery means, that, that's also uh, used as a house battery or it could be called a house battery. Uh, service battery, house battery, um, they are typically uh, used as to describe the same thing, which is the battery that runs basically everything on the boat, um, with the exception of starting the engines and the bow thruster and the windlass. Besides that, this service battery uh, handles all the other loads, and this is the battery that's power, powering everything right now. Um, you also see that there are some fuses here. Um, these, are, uh, these are fuses associated with some bilge pumps, um, trim tabs, heaters. Um, there are two different, two locations where you'll see these, uh, these fuses, uh, and this is one of them. The majority of them are forward, um, and I'll show you that location in a little bit later on in the video. Um, but this is where you will go and turn on the, uh, these batteries. Um, now where the batteries are located, again, you typically, you have three, um, three batteries uh, back here because of the twin engines. Um, this is where the batteries are hidden. Um, this is your port engine start battery. Behind this panel here is your starboard, starboard engine start battery. And when you have the dual engine, you'll have this box here where this is your service or house battery right here. Um, the batteries that uh, we put on are um, really fabulous batteries. They are fiberglass matte AGM batteries, which are the industry standard for very nice batteries. Um, and these are group 31s. So they're about 100 amp hours each. Um, and so these are three batteries here. There is another battery on board this boat, um, which is forward. And I'll show you that in a minute. But when you have a single outboard uh, 28 cabin, the battery that's located in here is a service battery. That location is where the engine start battery is, and this box is not around. Now, sometimes I will, uh, people will comment on the inconvenience of the location of these switches. Um, and I've got a little bit of a pro tip for you. Um, there's typically this bench seat, so sometimes getting to those switches can be inconvenient. But what I like to do, I'll show you that right now, <clears throat> on my particular boat, I will keep this hatch right here unlocked all the time. Um, there's typically a cushion over here when I'm not using the boat. There's the cushion and then the cover. Um, and But I'll always leave this hatch on, on, uh, done so I can just reach in here and turn on and off the service batteries before I even get down below on the boat. But yeah, you can also get an optional uh, remote battery switch um, which is located forward at the helm if you want to change that location. Um, I don't find that super necessary because of the easy access to those switch 
which is uh, from that hatch. But um, your other battery, your bow thruster battery, um, this is bow thruster battery, and if you get the anchor windlass, uh, that battery is stored right in here. Um, you also, the switch to turn on that battery is all the way forward right there, this rotary switch here. Now you do have a couple other things going on in here. Um, this is also where your, um, your switches are associated with the shore power. Um, and then this is also where your battery charger is as well. Um, and uh, since we're in here, I'll talk about uh, what these switches are. All the way on the left, that's your uh, main breaker switch to allow power to come in. The next one over is your um, another main switch to um, power the uh, panel, which the panel has two other switches for receptacles or your battery charger. All the way over here is your voltage meter. Um, and we'll go ahead and plug in the shore power so you can see what that looks like. Um, a good habit for doing shore power is you to have this these switches off before you plug the boat in. Um, it's also best practice to um, the there's your cord on the boat side, then there's the dock side uh, cord that gets plugged into the pedestal. You'll want to plug in the pedestal plug first, shut off that breaker at the pedestal so there's no power going in here when you're plugging the batter when you're plugging this cord in. Plug the cord in, rotate this so it's so it's nice and secure. Go back to the pedestal, turn on the power, then you come back here. You turn on this switch right here. So you have a green light that's telling you that there's power coming into the panel. We'll allow the rest of the power to come in, which you can see we've got at 120 volts. That's what we wanna see. And what we'll do is we'll turn the charger on. We'll leave the receptacles off. I'll show you where the receptacles are located. Um, the receptacles on board the boat only work when uh, you're connected into shore power. And over here is your battery charger and that charges all the batteries on board the boat. Um, and this is a great, a great charger here. And we'll just go ahead and leave the charger on for now. Um, as far as other locations for, uh, for where the uh, receptacles are, you'll see right in here in the head, this is a receptacle right in here. And we talked about other places for uh, fuses on board the boat, which are located right here. I'll zoom in so you can see. So there's all sorts of other breakers or fuses uh, associated with other electrical panels on board the boat. You'll see down, down there to the forward on the panel, that's a 12 volt, uh, a 12 volt plug right there. Um, so if you ever have an issue with any particular system to go on and see how, where it's labeled, um, courtesy lights, if you have an issue with courtesy lights or your shirt's light, you just want to make sure that um, these black dots aren't pushed out. Um, you also will see around we have these, um, because this is an enclosed space, you'll have a uh, carbon monoxide detector in here. Uh, light switches are right here. Um, and you'll see there also is another carbon monoxide detector powered by the service battery bank right here as well. Now um, for charging devices, you have um, you have a 12 volt outlet right here and a USB plug. This is associated with the fusion system. Your fusion system needs to be on in order to utilize this. 
as a charging port. Um, I do find that uh, using this 12 volt plug as a charging port charges things faster than it does through this Fusion. This just enables you to plug a phone in and, uh, and, and have it communicate with music that way. I find that Bluetooth is a little bit easier in that department, but uh, that's where you can charge some devices. Um, you also have for another electrical outlet is located right here as well. <clears throat> now, next thing I'd like to talk about is power management and details like that. Um, as far as understanding what your battery voltage is for your uh, outboards, you can have that. This is the Mercury display here. Um, when the, the batteries are off right now, but you can see the voltage for each of the batteries. Um, what I like to do as far as knowing what the voltage of your service battery bank is, uh, again, that battery right there, is um, in this 12 volt outlet charger here, I like to get one of those uh, 12 volt outlets with two USBs and then also a uh, readout for voltage. Uh, that way um, I can monitor the, ba the service battery voltage very easily from there. Um, once the batteries get down to 12.2, 12.1 volts, that's when you want to make sure to charge the, uh, charge the batteries. Um, batteries do get charged from the short power cord or um, also from your engines while you're underway. Now, one thing I want to talk about, which I think is very important, is uh, for the folks that have uh, their axopars on a mooring. Uh, when you're on a mooring full time, um, I want to stress the need for having a solar panel on the boat. Um, this is a, uh, a circumstance that is needed for all modern power and sailboats these days. Um, <clears throat> because you of all the modern electronics and the memories associated with everything, I, I pointed out the carbon monoxide detectors, the stereo has a draw, and the, even the, um, the uh, Simrad screens have a draw. All these pieces of equipment, even when the service battery is shut off completely, it still is drying down your service battery. Um, it's a great service battery. You've got 100 amps of, of power there. But if you leave the boat without being plugged in on a mooring for a long period of time, uh, you, uh, over two weeks, you can come back and that service battery will be drained. So what I recommend doing is have, if you are one of those owners that plan on having your boat on a mooring. And this isn't just for Axapar, this is for any modern boat. Uh, you really should have a solar panel on board. Um, this is how, we, how some installs go. Uh, this is a Sol, uh, Solbian uh, solar panel. It's the SP78. Um, it fits in really nicely on the 2022 hardtops. It's a 78 watt uh, unit. Um, highly recommend it for those who are not plugging their boats in. Um, it will just uh, help combat the drains that are constantly present on the service battery bank. Now, when people are thinking, oh, solar panel, I'll be able to uh, charge so much faster. I'll be able to you know, leave the refrigeration on all the time. I'll be able to do all this great stuff. Well, you need a lot of solar for that. The purpose of this solar panel is to protect the battery while the boat is not in use for a long period of time. I personally, my boat um, has a solar panel as well because I'm not plugged in and it's worked out great for me. I always know when I go to the boat, even you know, two weeks goes by fairly quickly when you're busy. Um, it's nice knowing that when you go to the boat, you've got a full house battery bank thanks to these solar panels. So really want to uh, get the word out there um, so um, everyone knows 
uh, about that for, for boats. It's just, I find it not talked about as much for boats in general. Um, and these solar panels are the solution. I like these installs because it's nice and clean. Um, there's no wires. Uh, so it is, I think it looks great and it fits a great purpose as well. This will conclude this video talking about the electrical system on an Axapar 28 cabin. If you have any questions for us, please do feel free to reach out to us using the information below this video. And if you like videos like this, please do click the subscribe button for more videos like this.